Praise the Lord. Pleasant good morning to all of you this morning. I greet you all in the most holy and precious name. Amen. Those of you that are joining with us live this morning, 
I want to say, God richly bless you all this morning. Amen. And this morning, we are happy to come into your home to bring church into your home this morning. Amen. Because God is alive. Amen. And he's seated at the right hand of God the Father this morning. Amen. As you join this morning with your family in your home, whatever you are doing, just take some time off for God because he took time for us. Amen. Shall we all pray this morning? Heavenly Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, you said this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for life this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for good health and strength. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your protection over us, my God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for bringing peace, my God, in the world, my God. Lord, in this time, my God, where we needed it so much, my God. Lord, because you are the Prince of Peace. Lord, and we thank you this morning for we know you are in control. Lord, that you will touch life this morning, my God. Lord, I pray, my God, that the Holy Spirit will just come and minister to the people this morning. Lord, those that are hopeless, my God. Those that are discouraged, my God. Lord, those that are searching for an answer. Lord, I pray, my God, they will look to you, Jesus, because you are the answer for the world today. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for bringing your peace, my God, upon the world, my God. Lord, as we face, my God, this pandemic, my God. Lord, you are the only one we can call on to, my God. You said in your word that we should call upon you in the day of trouble, and you will answer us. Lord, and we thank you for the answer this morning. Lord, bless your people, my God. Lord, as they come together, my God, to worship you, Jesus. Lord, and we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This morning you are in your home and you have your Bibles. I want you to turn to Psalm 150. Psalm 150. This is what it said. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the fundament of his power. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellence, greatness. Praise him with a song of the trumpet. Praise him with a psaltery and harp. Praise him with a timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instrument and organs. Praise him upon a loud cymbal. Praise him upon the high sounding symbol verse 6 let everything that has breath praise the lord praise e the lord amen hallelujah so this morning in your home i want you to praise god amen whatever instrument you have take it out and make a joyful noise unto the lord this morning and i want you to join us this morning as we worship the lord amen because Jehovah is his name. Worship him this morning. Get your children, your husband, your wife. Jehovah is your name. Come on, just sing it out. Jehovah. Jehovah is your name. As we call in that name. Jehovah. Your name Jehovah is his name Jehovah Hallelujah is your name Oh yes this is Mighty warrior Yes Jesus Come on he's great in battle Jehovah We're gonna fight our battle. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah is your name. Come on, as you call the name. We bless. 
bless your name, God. Oh, we worship you. Jehovah is your name. You alone are That's worthy. It. Jehovah. Come on, as you call that name. Call the name. for the name hallelujah the name of jesus the bible says where every knee shall bow and every tongue confess amen because he's a way maker this morning whatever you are going through this morning god is able to make a way for you amen hallelujah we thank you jesus come on and just worship him in your home this morning hallelujah the scripture said let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. Amen. So you're going to praise him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. When the praises go up, the blessing will come down. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you, Lord. Come on. God is able to make a way for you. Where there seems to be no way. Those of you that are without a job, come on. Trust God. God is going to make a way for you this morning. Because he's here. Moving in the midst. Yes, Jesus. Worship him. I worship you. I worship Come on, just stand in your home. Lift your hands and worship you the Lord. Are here. For he's here. Working in this place. Hallelujah. I worship you. Lord, we worship you. I worship you. Come on, lift your hands. You are here. Yes, Jesus. Moving in our midst. Moving our land. I 
worship you. Jesus. I worship you. Come on, every knee, every knee shall bow. You are here. Yes, Jesus. Working in this place. I worship you. We worship you. I worship you. You are way Darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, say it. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touch your feet, touching every Lord, we pray for the world, my God. Lord, as the go through, my God, you this strong time, move, heal every heart. I worship you. I worship you. Turn the lives around. You are here. Lord, you ever present. Turn the lives around. Ever present in time of trouble. I worship. I worship you. I worship you. Give me the honor. The light of the world. He's the way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's a light and a darkness. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Come on, as we sing it. Even when I don't see it, you work. Oh, yes. Even when Come on, he's still working. working. Even though stop. we cannot you see it, he never stopped working. You never stop working. Come on. Even when I don't see it, you work. Even when I don't feel it, you work. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. You're working, even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You never stop working. You never stop working. Miracle worker. Yes, Jesus.
Come on, as we praise him for who he is. Yes, Lord. Come on, he's the promise keeper. He's the light in the darkness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless your name this morning. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for who you are this morning. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And you are our soon returning King. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, God. We worship you in this place, my God. Lord, we just thank you, my God. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we remember, my God, Lord, our nation, my God, Lord, that you will touch, you will heal, my God, the world at large, my God. Lord, that you will touch and you will heal, my God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, because we need you, my God, no more than ever. Lord, and we thank you, my God, that we can look and we can call upon the name of Jesus. Lord, the name of Jesus, whereby men shall be saved. Lord, and we thank you for the wonderful name. We thank you for the precious name of Jesus. The name above every name. Lord, and the name that is above every name, Lord, we call on that name this morning. Lord, and we thank you for answering our prayer this morning. We thank you, Lord, for blessing your people, my God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Pleasant good morning to each and every one of you. To all the members of Word of Faith Gospel Tabernacle in your homes, wherever you are. And all our friends, whatever part of the world you are viewing this morning. God richly bless you. Please remember, or please know that we remember you in prayer every day. We pray that God will touch you. God will supply your every need according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. And we are here to give words of encouragement this morning. Amen. We know that through this situation, you know, you might be discouraged, but have faith in God. For with God, all things are possible to them that believe. This morning, my text is taken from 1 John chapter 2, verse 18, and 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. 1 John chapter 2, verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last time. And as you have heard, that Antichrist shall come. Even now are there many Antichrists, whereby he know that it is the last time or the last days. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1 says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. I read it again. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The title of my message this morning is the last days condition of Christians. The last days condition of Christians. What is your condition today? This morning we're going to look into the Word of God and see where you and I fit in in these last days. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you Lord for the praise and worship that went up before you as a sweet smelling savor. I pray Lord even as I go Lord into your word this morning, hide me behind the cross. These are not my words, they're yours. And help me to do justice as I minister your word under the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, that we'll all be encouraged. We'll know and realize the condition 
that we are in as believers and we'll strive for perfection thank you for speaking to our hearts today in jesus name amen and amen certainly friends what we see happening with this pandemic and, and the entire world is affected we are getting a clearer picture as to what the last days would be like many years ago over 2000 years ago jesus spoke about the last days the signs the wonders all those things but today we have the privilege to see or to have a glimpse of what the last days would look like and not only that you and i as believers we need to know that we are strong in god that we are holding on to the faith of our lord and savior jesus christ that we are not wavering we are not falling away but we are serving god in spirit and in truth you know the scripture has everything the word of god has everything just as jesus spoke about the signs of the end time the apostles also prepared us that we should not fall we should not be discouraged we should not lose our faith in times like these so let us look and see how it would be among believers among the christians in the last days first john chapter 2 verse 18 as i read little children it is the last time or the last days as ye have heard that antichrist shall come even now are there many antichrists whereby we know that it is the last time so in the last days there would be that spirit of antichrist in the world how do we realize that that what people would be saying and what people will be doing in the last days would be contrary to what Christ wants it would be contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ so there would be a lot of propaganda and practices that are contrary to the word of God to what Christ spoke about there would be no morality as we know in many countries of the world prayers in school and public places have been terminated nobody wants to hear about god and the word of god and the things of god and they do not want to hear the name of jesus christ that is the spirit of antichrist today as i speak many christians are persecuted in nations that do not want to hear anything about christ they do not want to hear the name christ mentioned although he went on the cross and died for my sin and died for yours and he's a mighty healer deliverer mighty god everlasting father he's able to touch you at the point of your knee many nations do not want the word of god to be preached and they do not want anybody to call the name of jesus christ that friends is the spirit of anti christ what about the issue of morality when you see issues like gay rights have prominence when you see issues like abortion have great prominence and being supported by those in authority when you see the right being made wrong 
and the wrong being made right, I tell you, that is the spirit of Antichrist. And as you look at what is happening in the world today, as you look at international news, you will see all these issues. And you see how the wrong things are celebrated. And people who do, are doing the wrong things and living alternative lifestyles, contrary to the word of God, they have all the rights in the world. But those who want to lift up the name of Jesus, they are persecuted. Churches are being burnt down. Believers are being killed. They are being thrown behind prison bars. I tell you, it is uh, the spirit of Antichrist. So that is one of the signs of the end times. And we are seeing it right before our eyes. As we put on our television, as we look at social media, as we look at all these things that are happening that are contrary. Where the wrong is being made right and the right is What other conditions are we to face in the world today, in the last times, the last days? Second Timothy chapter 3, from verse 1, it says here, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. If you don't, or well, have not realized, that we are living in perilous times all over the world because of this COVID-19 pandemic where you do not have freedom of movement, freedom of association. And even like what we have to do here this morning, come and send the word of God via the internet to abide by the rules of social dis distancing. Where you have so much limitations right now in terms of what you could do. Friends, we are in perilous times. But I'm saying that this is just the beginning. When you look at the price of oil that has gone under a dollar, a barrel. When you look at economic downfall of nations. When you look at wars and rumors of wars and all the natural disasters that you see, earthquakes and even this pestilence, this pandemic, it is creating havoc in the world today. I tell you, and Jesus spoke about it. In the last days there will be wars, rumors of wars, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places. All these natural disasters. Friends, that is a sign that we are in the last days. The word of God told the perilous times shall come. Yes, we are in perilous times. And as Jesus said, this is just the beginning of sorrow. What are some other signs that the word of God tells us about the last days? Verse 2, 2 Timothy chapter 3 said, For men shall be lovers of their own self, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers, of those that are good. What are we seeing here? The condition of Christians. It goes even deeper. It goes from the world to the church. So we have looked at the world and the economies of the world. We have looked at all those limitations in the world. But there are also signs in the church. What do we see? Christians would be self-centered. They care only about 
themselves. For men shall be lovers of them, of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. So even the Christians, it will affect self-centered. What also would we notice about Christians? They will be fake as well. Fake Christians. As we read lower down, we'll see traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. So we're talking about God, but deep down in our heart, we are far away from God. Christians would be ungodly and will be fake. We know the Bible from cover to cover. We talk about it, but we are not a living the word of God. Fake Christians. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And as the scripture warns us, from such turn away. So we have self-centered Christians. We have fake Christians putting on a good show. And we have powerless Christians. When they pray, nothing happens. They don't even believe that God is able to answer their prayers. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. And the scripture says, from such, turn away. Friends, it speaks even to us in the last days, what will be happening among Christians and believers, so-called believers. Self-centeredness, only concern about themselves fake, putting on a good show, a good front, but not deep in the faith and practicing the word of God in everyday life. They will be powerless. You're talking about God, but you really don't believe that this is a miracle, that he's a miracle worker, that he's a healer, he's a mighty God, he's a deliverer, he's able to heal you when you are sick. He's able to deliver you from your problems and situations. We become fearful because we do not have faith in this great and mighty God. It is a time of reflection, friends, to see in the midst of what is happening. Right now, people are not allowed because of social distancing. People are not allowed to gather in a church setting. But thank God, because of technology, you are in your homes. Wherever you are, you are able to hear the word of God. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So let your faith arise this morning. After this is said and done, how many Christians would remain serving God with diligence? How many Christians would remain serving God and having a desire to go back to the house of God and serve God, hallelujah, in a, congregate, in a congregation, in a church setting? Or would you say, I don't need that again. So the, through these testings and trials that you are going through, how many would remain out of it serving God the right way? Or we might say, 
I'm finished with church. I'm finished with the things of God. How many of us? First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1 speaks about there will be a fall in a way. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. So friends, in times like these, in times of testings and trials and where our faith is being tested and tried. With all these adverse conditions and situations that face the world and you and I. The Bible says, many shall fall away from the faith. So who knows, after all of this, some people would say it doesn't make sense. I'm not going back to church again. I'm finished with this Jesus thing. How many will be like that? Well, I'm telling you, the Bible says that some shall depart from the faith. But it gets worse. Giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So when you start falling away from the faith and, uh, and staying far from the word of God and not reading your Bible and praying in your home, so many of you make time to spend time in prayer and worship in your homes because you can't come to church. How many of us keep in tune with the things of God? And if you are not doing that, what will happen when you leave that space vacant in your life? You are opening up yourselves to what? Seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, the devil getting to take control of your life. Speaking lies and hypocrisy having their conscience seared with a hot iron and all sorts of contrary things that you are exposing yourself to start to take control of your life. Friends, those are the things that will be affected Christians and believers in the last days. Self, being self-centered, only concerned about yourself, being fake, putting on a good show, being powerless. When the Bible says, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, whatever you loosen on earth is loosened in heaven, praying over your own situation, your own family, and having victory over your situation. That is the power that Christ has given us. But then on the other hand, because we are fake and just putting on a show, we have no power. And then as the scripture says, there will be a falling away from the faith. Being self-centered, being fake believers, being powerless, and falling away from the faith and embracing seducing spirits that make us stray from the things of God and doctrines of devils. In other words, our minds are being thwarted because we believe in things that are contrary to God's word. The question is through these times of of testings and trial of our faith. How many 
believers would remain serving God. In the last days, there would be a falling away. But how many believers through the testings and trying of their faith will continue serving God? And if we realize that we might be falling short in one way or the other, we have to ensure that that does not happen. That we remain faithful to God. How to ensure that does not happen? We look at 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 10 to 12. To ensure that does not happen to us. It says, but thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra. What persecutions I endured but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea. And all that will live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. What we see here. Is that yes. When you decide. To live right, to do that which is right in God's sight, you will have a position and you will be persecuted. What we need to do is endure sound doctrine. In other words, to avoid having seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, and those things messing up your mind and strain you from Christ. Stick to the word of God. Spend time daily in your homes reading the word of God. Stick to the teachings of Jesus Christ and the teachings of the apostles who went through all those troubles and long suffering and persecutions and afflictions. Yes, do not let those things make us stray. As sound believers, you will face persecution. You will face hardships. You will face difficulties. We are not immune to those things. And in so doing, when you stick to the word of God, you look at the word of God and apply it to your life. Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. You stay connected to Jesus Christ. What is going to happen? You will have the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering. You will have the fruit of the Spirit inside of you. That shows that you are genuine. You are genuinely connected to Jesus Christ. Stay connected to God's word. Read your Bible. Pray, seek the Lord. This is not a time of vacation for believers. But it is a time to get closer to our Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ. Don't ever say I'm taking a rest from God. No way. Now is, now is not a time for that. There is no church. I don't have to come to church on a Sunday morning. So I could take a rest from God. You hear me? Get serious and serve God in spirit and in truth. Read the word of God. Practice the word of God. Do what he says. And live a life to please God. Make sure you are filled with the spirit of God. So that you could have 
the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, all of these things that will help you go through trying and testing times of the last day. And that is how you will be genuine, not fake. So endure sound doctrine. First Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 11. It says here, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10 says, And let those, these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of the deacon being found blameless. We must be living a blameless life. We must be living a life to please God. Having a desire to live for Him. For His honor and glory. Be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. And your sound doctrine. Dig deep into the Word of God. Be genuine. Be filled with the Spirit of God. And the fruits of the Spirit. And as you do that, God is able to bring you through victoriously. Through these testing times of the end days. And if you don't do that, you will be part of those, that grouping of those who fall away. You will certainly fall away. Friends, let us not become that. Let us take heed. First Timothy chapter 4 says, Let no man despise thy youth. Verse 12. But be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Let us occupy ourselves daily with God's word. Reading the word of God. Exhorting, encouraging one another. Praying one for another to be strong. Else if you don't do that, what is going to happen? You will certainly fall away. Let us not be part of the part of the, the statistics of those who fall away. Friends, let us be faithful and serve God in spirit and in truth. Do you want to, to be a fake believer or do you want to be a sound and solid believer in Christ Jesus? Let us serve God in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Let us not fall away because we are not holding on to the things of God. Let us look at our lifestyle, friends. Let us look at our lifestyle. What are you doing in a time like this? You don't have to come to church because of this situation, social distancing, but you are in your home. Are you making set times for prayer? Are you making set times with your family for encouraging each other? For praying one for another? Are you spending time worshiping God? We need to do that. We need to do that. If you don't do that, what is going to happen? 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 13 says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being 
deceived what is going to happen your life will degenerate terribly if you're not connected to Jesus Christ so just covering up your life as a fake believer one day will be exposed because doctrines of devils will come into your mind your thoughts and your life will be degenerate as the scripture said but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived let us not be part of that category but let us stay connected to our lord and savior jesus christ so even as i conclude please remember perilous times shall come and we are in perilous times but the believers will be affected christians will be affected let us not be self-centered let us not be fake let us not be powerless because the next step will happen we shall fall away but let us end your sound doctrine let us stick to the word of god and live a life that is pleasing to god and as jesus was speaking to the woman at the well what did he tell her John chapter 4 verses 23 to 24 it says but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the father in spirit and in truth for the father seeketh such to worship him so the sign of the true believer is to worship the father worship God Endure your persecution, endure your hardship, but worship God in spirit and in truth. Stick to that standard. God is a spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us not be in that category of being self centered ungodly, fake, powerless and falling away but let us stay connected to Jesus dig deep into the word of God stay in tune with the things of God use these down times in your life to get closer to God and worship him in spirit and in truth be truthful let us not be fake because God wants those who worship him to worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for showing us the situations and the conditions that Christians or believers will be facing in the last days testings, trials but help us to stay connected with you Lord to stay connected to you Jesus to, to read your word to pray, to seek your face to hear from you to hear what your Holy Spirit is saying to us to do that which you want us to do and help us not to be tuning in to doctrines of devils and seducing spirits that would pull us away from serving God. Help us today to learn to serve you in spirit and in truth. Because you know our thoughts, you know our intents, you know those things that are deep down in our heart help us to be truthful. Lord, 
We may not be perfect, we make mistakes, but help us to be truthful and come to you and ask you for forgiveness and ask you to help us and strengthen us in our weak areas. So there you are in your home, wherever, and you realize that you have faltered, you have made mistakes, you, you are not perfect. None of us is perfect. God wants us to be truthful to him. Don't hide anything under the carpet. But say, God, you know my faults. You know my weaknesses. You know my shortcomings, my failures. And talk to him. Be truthful to him. And he will help you. You could say this prayer after me. It's a sample of a prayer. Say, dear God, I've heard your word. And even as a believer... I am weak. I have shortcomings. I have failures. I have weaknesses. Lord, forgive me of my mistakes. Forgive me of all those things that I've said and done and even imagined that are displeasing to you. I am weak, but you are strong. Forgive me, cleanse me, wash me with your precious blood. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. And help me to live a life to please you all the days of my life. That I will be a truthful and honest worshiper of God. Worshiping God in spirit and in truth. I thank you for doing it, Father. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Friends, it was nice. That you took your time out from your busy schedule to be with us and to spend time with us today. I pray that the message today would have touched your heart and been a blessing to you. Let us be sober minded. Let us live this life to please God for his honor and his glory. I now call on my wife and she is going to Say a word of thank you, and she's going to dismiss in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you this morning. Hallelujah. This morning you have heard the word of God. The choice is yours this morning. Amen. We see the signs of the times everywhere. Amen. You got to make your choice. Stand firm for the Lord. Amen. As the message was being preached, don't be a fake Christian, but be a faithful one. Amen. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for this time in your presence. Lord, I pray, my God, that you will touch the people, my God, those that are viewing, my God. Lord, I pray, my God, that you will help them, Lord, to stay connected to you, my God. Lord, even in these last days, my God, Lord, you said in your word that many shall fall away from the faith. Lord, but you said in your word, they that endure to the end shall be saved. Lord, and we thank you, Lord, for endurance, my God. Lord, we thank you, my God, though the trials have become God. Lord, that you will help us, Lord, to stand firm in Christ Jesus on that solid rock. Lord, we thank you, my God, because we know all other ground is sinking sand. Lord, and we thank you, my God, just as the wise man built his house upon a rock and it stood firm. Lord, the flood came and the wind blew, but it stood firm. Help us, my God, to be wise Christian. Lord, to build on that solid rock which is christ jesus lord and we thank you lord for each and every one of us here my god lord i pray lord that you will bless them bless the family my god lord we pray lord a special prayer my god for our world my god lord that you will bring healing my god lord as you said in your word if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray seek your face and turn from our wicked ways then you will hear from heaven, forgive our sins and heal our land. Lord, and we thank you this morning in advance for healing our land. 
Lord, and we give you thanks and we give you praise in Jesus' name. God richly bless you all this morning. And tune in on Wednesday night, 8.30, as we continue to lift the name of Jesus. Amen. So stay connected to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God richly bless you. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you.